I'm Kylie Olsen from YouDiscoverMusic.com and look who I'm joined by is an absolute blues legend, the lovely Walter Trout. Hello. Well, thank you. I haven't been called lovely in a long time. That was very nice. <laughs> well, you are lovely. <laughs> I might say something different at the end of the interview, but well, let's there see you how go. it goes. Well, yeah. Hope springs no. eternal here. Yeah, so we're at Rambling Man, and um, it's quite a beautiful little boutique festival, but how are you finding it so far? Um, so far, it's been great, yeah. but I've only been here for about an hour, okay. walking around the grounds and talking to people, and it's um, got quite a nice, nice feel, and it's a beautiful day, too. And is it special to be on stage when you think you've got Warren Haynes on there? There's you, you know, it's like a, a wonderful mix of artists. How does it feel to it, be part it, of that? That's a great lineup. Yeah. Warren's a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. You know, I made a record with him yeah. last year. Yeah. And um, so I think it's going to be a good evening. Do you like playing festivals? I like playing everywhere. Yeah, but these festivals, I always feel that you get to sort of meet other artists and hang out with your friends a little bit. It's a bit more of a social thing. Yeah, it is. It's kind of like a social gathering backstage, mm. and it's a lot of fun. You yeah. do get to see a lot of your friends, you know. So, um, like we were just talking about, the last time I saw you was at the Classic Rock Awards. Um, and like you say, you were, you were skinny, you were tiny, you weren't feeling very well then, and you had your transplant. For that, that sort of near-death experience for you, do you, has that changed the music for you in a way that it's made it performing a whole lot sweeter maybe because you know that you know, you nearly, we nearly lost you? Uh, it has changed everything for yeah. me. It's changed my entire perspective on being alive. And um, the music, it means more to me than it ever did because it was taken from me. When, yeah. when I got out of the hospital, I couldn't play the guitar. I had to start over. Really? Uh, it took me a year to get it back, yeah. How I, come? Um, well, you know, I was so ill, I had brain damage. I couldn't speak. I didn't recognize my wife right. or my kids. Oh my God, okay. So I had to get therapy to learn how to talk. Sometimes I Le still get a little, 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 little with the speaking. Um, I had to relearn how to walk. I had lost 120 pounds, yeah. which was muscle. So I had, I had no strength. Plus I could not get the signals from my brain to go to my fingers and oh that God. took a lot of work. That, was that one of the scariest things for you thinking that you may never play again? Yeah, it, it was scary, but um, my first concern was to survive yeah true um and try to be a husband and a dad and see if i could at least do that yeah you know of course um so any guitarist that's worth his sort has played with john mayo you know you've got you you've got uh, eric clapton um i mean the list is pretty endless peter mick green taylor, peter mick green. taylor how does it feel to be part of that that family, that group of artists that everyone says, if you've done that, you know, that means you're at a certain standard of playing. It's, it's pretty amazing yeah. to this day. I, I did five years with John Mayall, yeah. and I am still starstruck by the guy. He, <laughs> he's like a father to me. He's lovely. He's one of my dearest friends, but I'm still always in awe of his achievements. Yeah. And um, when he called me and offered me that gig, um, I was speechless, mm. you know, I, I mean, it, that as far as being a side man in the blues, that's the pinnacle, that's the mountaintop, yeah. you know. Yeah, I can imagine. What did you learn from him? Because he, he's quite, you know, he's a band leader, isn't he? And, you know, he's... He's one of the great band yeah. leaders, and that is a talent unto itself, you know. Guys like Duke Ellington and Count mm. Basie, you think of them as band leaders, yeah. and that's what John is. And yeah. the fact that he's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame kind of blows my mind. Because yeah. think of all the incredible musicians that have gone through the the university of mayall yeah you know it's like an elite training school it, isn't it, it really is and um he he's an amazing boss yeah. and i watched him for five years um how he runs the band there's a lot of psychology to it because he's dealing with personalities <laughs> yeah big ones and um he always was able to keep it light-hearted and keep mm. the tension down and keep uh, some humor in the whole thing and I've really tried to sort of emulate him now that I've been a band leader for 27 years yeah you know? exactly and do you think your sound changed after being in in the band with him 
Well, I was playing his music, yeah. you know, and I was trying to give him what I thought he needed in his music. But when I went solo, it became my music, and mm -hmm. I write the tunes and front the band. Um, but it's still basically the same stuff, you know, same stuff. What do you love about the blues? What is I it? love the emotional core of it because it's basically simple right um, it's simplicity that gives you the possibility of expressing complicated emotions over simplicity yeah. over a simple pattern the the possibility for self-expression mm. over that pattern is limitless it's only limited by your imagination and it is um, the basis of really of all modern you know American roots music do you think you need life experiences to write about the, you know, to write the blues? Do well, you th I, I, I think that life experiences give you authority and give you something to say. Like, like you, for instance, you know, everything that you've been through. Well, I have something to say. You've got a lot say. to write about. I yeah. do. I have something to say with it. And it's not just the writing and the lyrics, but what mm. you put into your, your guitar playing how much feeling, how much of yourself you're able to express through yeah. your instrument. And there's a lot of incredible young blues guitar players, especially in this country. Um, but I find that as they, they age and they get older and they go through more of life experiences, I find their music has more authority to yeah. it and more commitment. And do you think your playing has changed since, you know, your near-death experience? I know that it means more to me than it ever did. Yeah. And I think I'm putting more into it than I used to. Oh, I always think that. A good player is about the emotion. You don't have, you know, you can do all the twiddly stuff and everything else, but if you haven't got the emotion there, I think well, something is lacking. You have to be able to say something. Yeah. I, I always liken it to, say you wanted to be a poet. Yeah and you learned all these incredibly big words and you had this great vocabulary but you were spouting nonsense that didn't mean anything mm. the poetry won't mean anything yeah. so you can be a technical wizard but if you have nothing to say there's nothing there but but noodling I yeah. think, again, that's life experience. You have to be a bit sad or something that emotional inside of you, I think. You, you have to go through some things, yeah. and I hate to say it, you know. I mean, I don't want to sound... This will sound wrong, but I have to say it, you know. Some of the young fellas, they go through some addictions, a couple of divorces, um, recovery. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a lot more to say, yeah. you know. See, Although I'd be the last one to say, go out and get addicted yeah. to something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to make your playing a bit better. Yeah. Who, who, you mentioned some young artists. Who are the ones that are hot on your list at the moment? Um, you have some amazing talent in this mm. country, young talent. Danny Bryant, yep. Lawrence Jones, mm -hmm. Ollie Brown. Um, I know I'm going to forget a lot of them. Mitch Laddie. And if you wanted to take any of those under your wing and, and, and sort of, you know, essentially do what John Mayall did in a way. Well, a lot of those guys I have mentored mm. and played on their records yeah. and helped them get record deals. And so when, when I'm out and I hear a young musician that I think really has the goods, I want to help him. Do you? Oh, yeah. God, yes. I want to see him succeed. I want him to get out there and share his music with people because there's so much crap music in this world. We need honest musicians. We mm. need real music that has something to say and that has feelings and emotions and content. We need it. Yeah. So if I see someone who has that basic what's what is needed, I want to help them get out there. Yeah. I want the world to hear that sure. as an antidote to the crap. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I want to hear more of it as well. Talking of, ma of a man that had um, feeling and, and you know, a, a, a purpose and, and, a, and wanted to say something was B.B. King. Yeah. And you, I, I saw you at the, the premiere that was, uh, was it last year or a couple of years ago? There was uh, a premiere. Of the, of the documentary. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you played. I played, yeah. Yeah. How, I mean, what, was B.B. an influence on you? Well, I can tell you this story. 
When I was 16, I had an after-school job at a shopping center. Yeah. And I stocked shelves in a department store. And a friend walked up to me, a guy who worked there, and said, B.B. King is in the store. <laughs> and, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. He went, no, come here and look. Oh. And we went over and looked, and there was B.B. King and this other guy. And I'm, oh, my God. So I went over and I said, excuse me, Mr. King, I'm trying to learn blues guitar, and could I have your autograph? And he spent over an hour talking to me. He gave me advice, he mentored me, he gave me encouragement, he told me what to expect. Yeah. He told me, play from your heart, it's about feelings, it's about emotions. He also said to me, if you wanna get rich, don't play the blues. Mm -hmm. He said, you play the blues because you have to. Yeah. It chooses you, you know. And um, he inspired me so much, and he was such a great man. And then years later, I'm with John Mayall, and we did a lot of shows with B.B., and he became yeah. a friend of mine. And um, he was the greatest blues man that ever lived, and also the kindest human being I ever met. Oh, really? Yeah. Did, did you tell him that you met him when you were a kid? Yeah, he didn't remember. Did he not? Uh, you know, I'm yeah. a kid. Yeah, sure. I'm a kid, and he meets a lot of them. And, and everyone that ever approached him, he was a gentleman, too. And he made you feel like you were the most important person in the world at that time. Yeah. I responded to that greatly, hmm. you know. That was an amazing, not just musical inspiration. Yeah but an inspiration of how he can sh share his light with the world, you know? So how much of what he said to you came true then? Um, <laughs> like his advice, did you take, was that something that stuck with you throughout your well, whole Well, I certainly stayed with the blues. <laughs> you did, yeah. I didn't go out for uh, making money, you know? Yeah. Put on spandex pants and play music I don't like. No, of course, if I put on spandex pants, it would be classified <laughs> as a horror film. <laughs> Wonderful, but you're still here, which is great. I'm still here you by the grace playing. of God and yeah. some great doctors and the love of a beautiful woman who kept me alive, you know. It's a wonderful story, wonderful. It's really great to chat to you. Thank well, you thanks, so Kylie. much. Thank great you. chatting with you too. Thank you.